Hey guys, um, I'm doing a lot of research on the authority of the King James Version of the Bible, and it really does truly have the most authority. That's why it's called the Authoritative Version, the AV. Um, basically, um, the battle goes on because there's two manuscripts, the Greek, one, the Greek text from Antioch and then the Alexandrian text, okay, the minority text. Um, all of the modern Bibles go with the Alexandria text from Rome um, because it's newer, not because it has more authority or anything, but because it's newer. The Antioch text, um, I'll show you. Let's just go step by step here. The two main sources are from Antioch and Alexandria. Okay, the majority text, Antioch and Alexandria, the minority text from Egypt. Antioch is in Syria. Okay, the majority text literally includes approximately 99% of the 5,000 plus extent manuscripts. Okay? The minor this is what the King James Bible translators use, and, that's, and they all have a high agreement with each other. Over 5,000 of the Greek manuscripts. These newer Bible translations only use the minority text, less than 1% of the extent manuscripts. That's the rest. Okay? Why are they using this? only because it's newer, not because it's actually valid. Look, even in the four Gospels alone, there's 3,000 discrepancies between this minority of texts. The two they found, the Sinaiticus and the Vaticanus, um, there's a red flag right there. It's called Vaticanus, uh, Vatican. Um, just between the, two, the four Gospels, there's 3,000 discrepancies between these two. And yet, the majority text found in Antioch, Syria, is extremely consistent with itself, okay? Um, another names for given for the majority texts are, of course, the Anti Antiochian text, the Byzantine, traditional, apostolic, um, Eastern versus Western, and the Textus Receptus, Latin for received text. This is what the KJV translators used, and this is um, actually symbolically represents many things. Antioch is a place of peace for Christians, Alexandria, Egypt, is a place of death. Um, in the Bible, there's this thing called the Law of First Mention, uh, and where it's a principle wherein the first mention of anything in the Bible generally sets the tone for the use of that word throughout the whole Bible. Okay, it's very relevant, very important. Egypt, the first time they talk about it, it's a place where they kill you and take your wife. I mean, it's all it's the burden of Egypt. Okay, it's always symbolic of slavery. Okay. Um, and in Alexandria itself is the first place where, um, uh, sorry, let's see. Yeah, Alexandria is the first Christian death. It's, it's negative, okay? It's where Stephen was killed, mentioned in Acts 6. And strangely enough, Antioch was first mentioned in Acts 6, kind of right here. Um, note also the first appearance of Antioch occur in the same book. Antioch and Alexandria, as if God's highlighting the two options we have to choose from. Antioch manuscripts or the Alexandrian manuscripts? We have to choose the Antioch, because that's where it was. Christians lived in peace. Okay, It's the first place of the great awakening of the Gentiles. It's the place where people were added unto the, uh, the Lord or whatever, and many people converted is what that means. Okay, uh, It's all symbolic, so let me just give you some examples. All right of what these other Bibles take out. This is all just taken from my phone. This is um, the KJV. This is Jesus talking to his disciples. Go ye up into this feast. I go not up yet unto this feast, for my time has not yet come. These newer Bibles take out the word yet. So Jesus is saying to them, I'm not going to the feast, for my time isn't yet come. But then he does go later. So these other Bibles imply are implying that Jesus lied. Because he does go, and that means either A, Jesus is a sinner because he lied, or B, if he doesn't go, he, he sins also because it's a sin to not go to the Feast of Tabernacles. Okay? You take out that one word, Jesus is a liar. You have to get this book I got. I, I, it's called What's Missing. It's on Kindle for like $8. I read it in a day. It's like 200 pages. And this is where I got all this information besides this website. A Kindle book called What's Missing. Go check it out. Um, of course, Acts 
837 is taken out, um, where the first person is converted, and they only baptize them in these newer Bibles. They don't actually do the part where it says, Philip said, Philip's talking to a eunuch, saying, If thou believest with all thine heart, thou mayest. And the eunuch answered and said, I believe that Jesus Christ is the Son of God. And then they stop the chariot and go baptize him in the water. All these other versions take it out. They take out the, the easiest part. Jesus said, my yoke is easy. You know, all you have to do is believe, and yet it's a huge conspiracy to make you not believe. Okay? Um, these other Bibles take this out as well. Uh, but Jesus turned and rebuked them, saying, Ye know not what manner of spirit ye are of, because James and John said, Can't you command fire to come down from heaven and stop this person? And Jesus says, You don't know what you're talking about. The Son of Man has not come to destroy men's lives, but to save them. And they went to the village. All these other Bibles say, after James and John said, Don't you want to command fire to come down from heaven to kill that naysayer? All the other Bibles just say, Jesus scoffed. And then it came to pass, as they went their way, they take out this part. The Son of Man has not come to destroy men's lives, but to save them. They take it out. The Alexandrian text is purely satanic. I'll just straight up say it. Okay? They take out the part where Jesus drips great uh, drops of blood from the ground. They take out the part where it says, Behold, thy mother and thy brethren stand without desiring to speak to thee. Jesus, the Catholics don't want to believe that Jesus had siblings. He's the, they want to believe Mary is a virgin forever. But no, Mary had children after Jesus. That's why they also took out Jesus as the firstborn. Okay? They took out where he actually showed him his hands and feet with the holes in him. Okay? Alright, yeah, If you, this is the book. Um, I shouldn't show it, but I just did anyway. So, Antioch of Syria is... Um, the KJV translators, where 5,000 plus manuscripts are, Alexandria, Egypt, is all these modern Bibles, where barely 50 of them are found. Let me show you more examples here. They take out, they, they leave this in, woe unto you, scribes and Pharisees. They take out hypocrites, for ye devour widows' houses. Or maybe they even take out this whole thing, because it's ironic that they are taking it out, so they crossed out hypocrites. It's just a big game once you actually look. One of the most primary... Um, prophecies for Jesus, Isaiah 7, 14, Therefore the Lord himself shall give you a sign. Behold, a virgin shall conceive and bear a son and shall call his name Emmanuel. Virtually word for word the same as Matthew 1, 23. The modern Bibles take out the word virgin. They say, Behold, a woman shall conceive, taking away the whole prophetic part, the whole miracle part, okay, to make you think it's not the same prophecy. It's ridiculous. Oh, this is where... Uh, I just did that one. Let me go right. Um, they take out the part where Jesus was received up into heaven. Okay, that's uh, that's ridiculous. Mark sixteen nineteen. You can see all the the uh, the Bible uh, numbers right here. Okay, and he said unto them, This kind can come forth by nothing but by prayer and fasting. They take out that. Okay. They make everything harder for you to be saved. Um, the word of the Lord was published throughout all the region. They leave this in, but I wanted to point out that this is Acts 13, 49. The word of the Lord is 49 books, as if to emphasize my other videos, that yes, the Old Testament is 22 books, not the current KJV 39. The translation of KJV is correct, not the ordering. Okay? And they take out this prayer and fasting also. Um, okay, last thing, y'all. I, I hope that convinced some of you that there is a conspiracy. You should read the book, What's Missing. It has every single, it has like over 250 examples like that, okay. This is, um, a, a prophecy from Jeremiah 31, 31. Behold the days, this is the Jewish book, Old Testament. Behold the days come, saith the Lord, that I will make a new covenant with the house of Israel and with the house of Judah not according to the covenant that I made with their fathers in the day that I took them by the hand to bring them out of the land of Egypt, which my covenant they break, although I was a husband unto them, saith the Lord. But this covenant shall be the covenant, but this shall be the covenant that I will make with the house of Israel. After those days, saith the Lord, I will put my law in their inward parts, and I will write it in their hearts, and will be their God, and they shall be my people. And they shall teach no more every man his neighbor and every... Um, 
and every man his brother, saying, Know the Lord, for they shall all know me, for from the least of them unto the greatest of them, saith the Lord. For I will forgive their iniquity, and I will remember their sin no more. The Old Testament God is saying, I will wipe away their sin finally. I will, I will be their Lord. I will be on the earth with them. I will put my law in their inward parts instead of doing outward things. Go to synagogue. Do the feast. Do this. Do that with your body. He will put it in your inward parts, in your hearts. Okay, and then he will remember your sin no more. Jeremiah 31, 31, okay? And of course, Jeremiah 50 talks about the great end of days after that. Okay? Please come to God. Just the first rule of, of proving God exists is to search for him. Most atheists search for him. They only search how to disprove him. So that's like the one rule. You're never going to find him if you assume he's not there. Uh, or you could just have a bunch of synchronicities in your life, like me and Carl Jung and the Groks, and then you just can't deny him no matter what. But anyway, I hope uh, this cleared up some history for you. Thanks.